Hello, I'm Adam Goodwin, this is Vibe Live, and today we're gonna to do mix aside with Leif Davis, Bournemouth Defender. How you doing, mate? I'm good, are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Thank good. you. It's a lovely day. We're in, in the Vitality Stadium, um, and we're gonna get straight into it. Um, so, who is the best player you have played with? There's a few, obviously. I've only been at one, obviously, professional club. Yeah. Like, playing professionally, but... There's a few when I was at Leeds, Calvin Phillips, mm -hmm. uh, Rafinha. Mm. Just it looks like you just don't get out of gear one yeah. when they're playing, like especially Calvin. Um, he just plays his his role in the game so so well. Yeah. And then with Rafinha, when I've had to mark him a few times when we done made a ball, mm. he just gives you a run for his money. He's so good, so quick. Mm. His, his movements incredible. Yeah. If I had to push you for one, who are you going for? I'll have to go Calv. Yeah. I'll have to go Calvin, yeah. Because he's made a big step mm. from, obviously, being in the Championship and then playing Premier League. Mm. A, a, people were underestimating him, thinking he's not going to play well in the Prem. But he's, he's shown what he can do. Um, exactly what he can do in the Championship. He's done yeah. it in the Prem. So he's proved people wrong, especially with England as well. Done so well at England, so... And I read that he might have had a little something to do with your move here. Did he uh, chat to someone there? Yeah, so, he spoke to uh, obviously Lewis Cook. He was saying, it, well, it was just saying, look after him. Yeah. Take him under your wing and that sort of thing. Just, you know what I mean? Look after him and show him around. And, and how's Lewis done? Has he, has he done it? All right. Yeah, he's done well. Um, yeah. Obviously, he was the first person I really spoke to because he was injured. When I came, I was injured. Mm. Um, and we just worked together, trying to get back fit. And then obviously, Lewis now, he's doing well with his rehab to get him back fit so hopefully he'll be back on the pitch soon and you mentioned your time at Leeds I think if we were going to pick a manager for this exciting team I think Marcelo Bielsa would probably be up there and I think everyone always wants to talk about him because he's you know this great coach world-class yeah. coach what is he like and what what is he like to be coached by him <sighs> to be fair he's an incredible manager um he, he just wants everything done 100 mm. percent everything right perfect he works it so hard. Um, it off season, you get two weeks off, and then you're on a program straight away, running, get back, you straight running again. Then to be fair, it's enjoyable. Get you fit in a game. You don't feel tired. Yeah. Um, but in training, he's always there, screaming on the pitch, just saying, "Come on, come on." Yeah. Better have it, hundred percent, hundred percent. If you don't, you've got to start again. Mm. So. But personally, I've learned I learned a lot from him. Yeah. In the in the three years I was there, he's a great coach. And you mentioned Murderball there. Another thing that people are talking about. Tell us what that was like for you, because it just sounds so intense. Um, it was a big shock for me when I first went in, because I'd never been in that like intense yeah. training session before. So the first time I done it, I was I was gone to be <laughs> fair. I was in the motion like, wow, this is crazy. Yeah. But. It's like 11 v 11, as a ball goes out of play, they throw another ball straight mm. on or stuff from the keeper, you've got to squeeze back on the mm. pitch. It's just like, and, and for, it's like a game of basketball. Yeah. It's, it's just attack and run and attack, run, back, back and forward for like blocks of five minutes. Could be anything, to be fair. Yeah. Five minutes, three minutes, but a lot of blocks. But after it, you know, it's, it hit you. You sleep well that night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. Let's move on to uh, the most underrated player you've played with. Someone that you think might not get the recognition that you think they should. Here as well. Yeah, you can include the players of Bournemouth. I was shocked when I came in as well. To be fair, with, uh, Gav, mm -hmm. uh, incredible player. Uh, when I when I first came and watched Chel uh, against Chelsea. I was so surprised with him. Like I thought, oh, he's going to get bullied here. Yeah. But he puts himself about. And to be fair, he should be spoken about more. Mm. He's a great player. Uh, a young lad as well. He's obviously away with international at the minute as well. Mm. So it just shows how well he's doing. Um, but I, 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 I think people just underestimate him. Like, oh, just a little man in the pitch. Yeah. <laughs> but to be, out on the training field as well, an incredible player. Just glides past people. Yeah. So good at passing, just picks your eye off. It's it, it's incredible. And I think that first game of the season, um, on the on the Friday night yeah. when he was playing, I think yeah. a lot of people didn't expect that he would, because like you say, he is quite a small yeah. guy, and and he just controlled the game. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, he's a small lad, but he's an unbelievable player mm. with the ball. So as soon as he's on the ball, he just makes things click. 
um, like the pass he done from over in the middle of the pitch out wide and went, when Ellie got yeah. through and scored. So, and I don't think people think, oh, he's not got that, and he's like, oh, but he, he really does. So. Yeah, and I think talking about obviously your move to Bournemouth, you're on loan at the moment. Yeah. Um, Scott Park is the manager, and I think. Gavin's the sort of player that I think Scott would like. He's a good pass for the yeah. ball. How, how are you settling in? Yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Obviously, it was frustrating when I came down. Um, just the day before I came down, I told my hip flexor. So it was just getting back fit, just a long thing, getting back fit. But now I'm back fit, I'm, I'm enjoying it, getting back on the pitch. Obviously, getting games in, minutes in, that's, which I wanted, really. Mm-hmm. Um, which I'm happy. That's why I obviously came down to try and get the game time I needed. Um but no, the lads have made us welcome. So, and the staff, all the staff, uh, the gaffers, really hard working as well. So I'm used to, I'm obviously used to the high intensity of training. And and how's Scott different to Marcelo? Obviously, I think the style of football is slightly different. But how is it for you in training and tactically? How, how have you sort of adapted to that? Um, it's quite obviously different uh, styles of play mm. um, at Leeds. Was um, Man to man stuff, whereas he has like you can pass players on obviously different line of defense, um, which is good. Um, uh, which I like to play the way this guff is playing, mm-hmm. um, instead of man to man because he could chase a man all over the pitch mm. and uh, but you wouldn't be in your position. So, yeah. I like the way that the style of play this guff is playing, so it's good. Cool. So, how about you built you've built a pretty decent team so far? So, you've got Calvin Phillips, you've got yourself. And you've got Gavin Kilkenny in. Um, yeah. You don't have to have a keeper. You can have a rush keeper. Would you yeah. be happy? I mean, you've been talking about murder ball. Calvin could probably do that job as rush keeper. <laughs> uh, who's next in your team? What about the best player you played against? Against? Um, I can't go for another midfielder. Um, I'd probably have to say Bernardo Silva when I came yeah. on against Man City. I just, it was so hard to get near him. Yeah. His feet are so good as well. He, um he just glides around the pitch. Obviously, you've seen that he done broke the record in the game last season for 13.5 mm. kilometres. It was just, when I came on, I knew I was in for a, a <laughs> tough running. So, What's it like when you're playing against a player like that, when you come on against Man City? Because like, obviously, you know, you're a footballer yourself, but do you still get a bit starstruck when you're seeing players like Bernardo Silva, who you're watching on the telly? Do you still, do you still think that? Not really. Um, obviously, when you're standing on the side of the pitch waiting to come on, you feel a bit like, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> but when you're on the pitch you can't go through the motion mm. um, because if you go through the motion then they'll just play they'll just get past you so yeah, easy yeah. so you've got to keep focused like, you just keep like your opponent and just make it one person that you play against all the time yeah. so you've got to try and do well every game you play or every game you come on you know what I mean so but after the game I was obviously that was my debut so I was walking like past the players like De Bruyne I was thinking a few years ago I was watching you I was yeah. thinking Incredible. So, did you manage to get a shirt after that game? I it? didn't know. Um, obviously, I kept mine because it was a my mm-hmm. home debut in the Prem, so I just wanted to keep mine. And obviously, with COVID, we weren't allowed ah, to right, swap yeah, yeah. shirts as well. So, what about um, your favourite player of all time? I mean, I don't want to. Obviously, you've got some great players in there, Calvin Phillips, Brandon Silva, but this player might be the best, depending on who you pick. Um, who are you going for? Of all time. Yeah. You, they, go, they go into your team in their prime, so... Uh... I don't have a defender on my team, but obviously the best player at the minute for me is, I want to say, Messi. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's just incredible the way he just moves around the pitch with the ball, the yeah. things he does on the ball. It's just like, how can he even do that? Like He's got six men around him on the edge of yeah. the box and he's still managing to get through players and you think, eh? Like, <laughs> if that was me, I'm tripping over the ball. Like, yeah. I'm getting tackled. Mm. But he just makes it look so, so easy. Mm. And I was shocked, to be fair, when he got his move to PSG. I mm. thought he would just stay at Barcelona. But it's going to be a scary team for PSG this yeah, season. Yeah, tell me about it. Tell me about it. How much football do you actually watch? Because obviously you're doing it every day. You're training and you're playing as well. Do you still have that buzz of watching a game on a Sunday? Or <sighs> For me, like... I. <sighs> It depends what game's on. Mm. If it's just like, a, I don't want to say a boring game, but I know it's gonna gonna be yeah. a, a nil nil game. I'll I'll flick through mm-hmm. and watch like a lot of different games on a day. But I'm not a one for like sitting down and watching it because mm-hmm. being in football, you just want to rest outside of football of course, as well. Yeah. Um, 
Because when you're in here, it's just football, football, football. Mm-hmm. So when you want to get out, you just want to focus, relax, and just in, enjoy your life, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, definitely. Um, and is there any players that, I know you say you don't watch too much football, is there any players that you sort of tend to watch that are in your position that you think, yeah, even, even not playing now, but players that have previously up, played? Um, for my position, I would say Marcelo. Mm. He's obviously... Still up, going yeah, now He's as still well. going now and he's still got it now. Yeah. Um, great player. Uh, that's what I was trying to mirror myself to, Marcelo. Mm. So he gets up and down as well. He's got not on the, the haircut. Ball. No, not there. <laughs> Miles from that. <laughs> so, yeah. But st- and Jordi Alba, them mm-hmm. two. I always used to watch him because Jordi Alba, he's got an engine on him. He just, yeah. He's so quick as well. Just up, down, up, down the pitch mm. all game. So I'll probably say them two uh, to mirror my position. Nice. So, last player you're going to put in your team. So far, we've got yourself, yep. Calvin Phillips. Bernardo Silva and Gavin Kilkenny. Who's the last player putting in? It's a wild card pick. You can put anyone you want in for any reason. It might be that you think they're going to wind up the opposition. It might be that you think they'll be good in that six-a-side environment. You can put anyone you've played with in. Anyone I've played with. You mentioned someone earlier that I didn't know whether you might put him in with Brazilian flair. Rafinha. I need a goal scorer. Yeah. I need a goal scorer. I mean, you know, you've I'm pl- going you know, to put Patrick Bamford in there. Yeah. A player that works hard for you, mm-hmm. for your team up front. He, um, obviously, got his debut last night for mm-hmm. England, which I'm absolutely buzzing for, for him. Um, on his birthday as well. <laughs> he's a, he's Did you wish him happy a, birthday? Yeah, yeah. I spoke to him yesterday after the game. He's such a nice guy. Mm. Uh, so down to earth. Works hard for you. All, all game, Marcelo screaming on him, <laughs> saying, run, run. He's just running from centre-back to centre-back all game. And when he gets in a position, he scores as well. So, mm-hmm. Well, most of the time. So, it like just showed last season, his first season in the Premier, he got goals. So, it would have to be Pat, yeah. He's a really good team. you got there, you got yourself. Yeah. Calvin Phillips, Gavin Kilkenny, Bernardo Silva, yeah. Lionel Messi and Patrick Bamford. I don't think there's going to be many people being that team, mate. No. I think we're solid at the back there as well. Thanks very much for joining Thanks me, mate. I really appreciate it. Thanks and, very uh, much. Speak to you soon. Thanks very much.